and welcome to this week's episode of Boat Test Reports. I am Captain Steve. Thank you very much for tuning in. This episode is brought to you by our good friends at Boston Whaler. With over 37 different boats to choose from, there is definitely a Boston Whaler out there for you. Boston Whaler is the unsinkable legend. Let's get right into news. Reggie Fountain, the undisputed king of offshore that left a legacy of performance innovations in his wake, turned 80 this past Sunday. We at Boat Test join everyone from the Fountain Power Boats team and, of course, the Fountain family in wishing a happy birthday to Reggie. And it seems our take on COVID-19 issues have gone from bad to worse, especially in Michigan, where last week we reported that boating wasn't allowed, that it was allowed. Now it turns out that boating is allowed, but only for non-powered boats. If you're sailing, canoeing, or kayaking, you're good to go. But if you have a powered boat, you are still restricted from water. That apparently is because there's an extra contact point with power boaters, mainly the gas pumps. Spokesman for the U.S. Customs and Border Protection says that there is no boating between countries. So, especially those in the northern border between Canada and the United States, if you think you're going to go to Canada and spend the day and come back after that, you cannot. Co-boat life reports all ramps in Colorado State Parks are open. And there's an interesting Facebook page that is called Open the Boat Ramps and Marinas and Fuel Docks. It's 1,300 people strong and growing. It's a grassroots effort to get all of the boat ramps opened up again. Now, this seems to be a fairly American response. Where are my freedoms? You can't take my freedoms away, etc., etc. So to give you a little bit of perspective, we heard from a viewer in New Zealand. We've been told we cannot go boating. We have more boats per capita in Auckland than any other country in the world. The loss of freedom is necessary, as if we get in trouble at sea, then we put our rescuers at risk and they may end up in the hospital, which is the last place we want to be right now. It's a sacrifice for a better future America doesn't seem to understand. Another one, Phil B. reports, you guys have got it lucky. Here in the UK, we're not allowed non-essential travel. Boating and motorcycling is off limits to us till the ending of the lockdown. And one more from Stefan Norsch. You are the lucky ones on the other side of the pond. Here in Europe and in the Med, all marinas are closed and we cannot even travel. Our borders are closed, but this doesn't matter. People are dying because of the virus. So stay healthy and enjoy boating as long as possible. Here's a map supplied to us by the National Marine Manufacturers Association that shows the states where boating is closed in red. Maryland, Michigan, and Washington State. The 18 states where there's partial access in yellow, and often this means that state parks are closed, and the 27 states in green where boating is open. But of course, social distancing must be practiced everywhere when going to a marina or a launch ramp. Now we also do product reviews during these shows, and one I would like to talk about right now is from our good friends at ICOM, the M93D. It's a VHF radio, but it is so much more than just a VHF radio. It's got the usual cast of features, the belt clip, the separate antenna, a remote microphone can plug right into the top of it. Uh, we can program our favorite channels in and select through those. And we also, of course, have a mechanical mic doing his thing. But what makes this so much more than a VHF is it's also a GPS. There's 50 waypoints that we can program in and we can also navigate to those waypoints. And because this has a GPS, when we send out an emergency signal through the MMSI, it also gives our location. Very cool feature. And we can also specify what type of emergency we're having. Fire on board, man overboard, swamping, sinking, anything like that. So as I say, this is so much more than your average VHF. What's more is we're giving one of these away. We are going to have a raffle where we give away one of these at the end of this month. Simply go on to BoatTest.com, look under Products and Services, scroll down to ICOM M93D, and there's a form in there that you can fill out. We just asked three simple questions. What's your favorite feature on this being one of them? And I'd be curious to see what you like about it. And good luck to you in winning the ICOM M93D. Now on to some questions. Captain Steve, can you give us some boat buying tips? Well, sure I can. The main reason Boat Test is in existence is to help you find the right boat for you and become a more educated boat buyer. But if you're looking at a boat and want to pick one out that's good for you, a couple of things that you should look at. The usability of the boat. For example, the swim platform. Is it easy to get in and out of the water? Is there a ladder that has to be attached to the swim platform? Or is there one that can be deployed from the water? Once you're out of the water, is there a shower nearby? Especially if you're a saltwater boater, you're gonna wanna shower off when you get out of the water. 
If it's an inboard boat or a stern drive boat, the engine room needs to be easy to access. You have to make daily engine checks and making those easy makes the checks easier. Is there room to stand behind the helm and are the controls within easy reach? A lot of times when you're standing at a helm, the overhead is very low, so you have to either sit down or sit on the bolster. No standing, and sometimes if you're standing, the brow of the windshield comes down so low that it blocks your view. Make sure that you have good visibility and that the controls are in reach. How roomy are the berths? A lot of times manufacturers will report that a berth is queen size or king size, but is it really? Maybe, maybe not. So check and make sure that it's comfortable for you, especially if you're a tall person. And boats move. There needs to be something to hang on to wherever you are. As you make your way through the boat, there should be a grab rail always within reach or something to hold on to. Now let's take a quick look at a few of the more interesting boats that we've recently tested. First, we have the Galleon 640, an upscale yacht with a premium level fit and finish. It also has two side balconies that increase the beam and the usable entertainment area. The Flying Bridge Helm is elegant in its uncluttered simplicity, but what I'm most impressed with is the sheer roominess of this area. Dropping down side balconies, these two side windows will open up, the counters expand upward, really making this a premier entertainment platform. The glass continues fully forward, huge windows, and remember what I said about Galleon being so innovative? Undo, two latches, and we create a seamless integration yet again with the interior entertainment aspects and the exterior. And then there's the Sea-Doo GTI SE170, a versatile personal watercraft that's offered in a choice of two engine packages and two different color schemes. She features intelligent throttle control, intelligent braking, and a closed loop cooling system. A major highlight of the GTI is its ability to accessorize by using Sea-Doo's link attachment system. Pop-up clips located on the aft platform allow for an array of stackable options, such as a soft pack, a cooler, and even a fuel container. All in all, the hull felt very rigid and stable, and the ride was controllable and predictable. The GTI was easy to get used to and left us feeling like seasoned pros in no time. Next was the Nimbus 365. This is an express style boat with a lot of innovative features inside that give it the functionality and changing personality of a Swiss Army knife. The engine room is accessed by lifting up the aft seat and then opening up the two hatches in the aft deck. Once inside, six feet, four inches of overhead. Now look at this thoughtful touch. Stainless steel, leather wrapped grab handle. A U-shaped settee wrapping around a pedestal table. Refrigerated drawer. It's a two burner stove. This is a gas stove. Electric is an option. We have a sink over here. Plenty of open counter space. And if we need more counter space, we can just unlatch the seat and tip it forward. And there's a more of a serving area. Where we normally see an island berth crammed into the bow, this one is set back from the forepeak just a bit, so it's much more roomy in here. So once again, this report for this week has been brought to you by our good friends at Boston Whaler. Upscale quality and strength of build makes Boston Whalers the unsinkable legend. They've got boats from 11 feet to 42 feet, so there's definitely a Boston Whaler for you. And to find out what's going on at Boston Whaler lately, we reached out to our friend at Boston Whaler, Will Rogers. What's going on at Boston Whaler nowadays? Well, with the safety and health of our employees, their families and the community in mind, and in line with CDC and state and local guidelines, we've suspended uh, boat manufacturing at Boston Whaler in March. During that period, some of us uh, have been performing our work duties uh, from home, such as myself. Uh, we also use this time to put in place comprehensive measures that will enable us to safely restart operations. Excellent. How are you going to be taking care of your employees once they come back to work? Well, our safety protocols for each facility are, are quite extensive, uh, including highlighted measures like temperature screening upon entry, um, additional uh, personal protection equipment, you know, the mask. Uh, we're going to focus on social distancing um, and really enhancing um, the cleaning protocols at uh, some of our common areas uh, and throughout the facility. Okay, so um, currently dealerships aren't open. How can I shop for a boat now? Um, Steve, you know, that's a really good question. If your local Boston Wheeler dealership is not open um, and you're looking for a boat, uh, we can certainly shop online at uh, www.bostonwhaler.com. There is somebody answering uh, emails. There is somebody uh, answering the phone. And perhaps you could even set up a virtual uh, walkthrough on the boat 
uh, or whatever is appropriate for your area. Yeah, that should be easy to do. Thanks so much, Will. It's good talking with you. So that's our show for this week. If you'd like to sponsor upcoming shows, please reach out to our executive producer, Kieran Connedy, and he'll provide you with more information on sponsorship. Other than that, thanks so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Until we see you again, we will see you on the water.